axis side right there. Let it go. Ooh, that's good. That one's sharp. Mm. Mm -hmm. I can feel something right in there. Yeah, yeah. Breathe. Exhale. All right, yeah, I know, I know. Here we go. Get it good. Been doing gymnastics since you were three, since 16 or so, you said? Yes. And you have some shoulder scapula pain. Tell me about what's going on today. I know you said you were a chiropractor a couple months ago. They adjusted you. Yeah, I just get this anxiety pain, like, right here. Okay. So I don't I don't really know why or how to get it to go away. I've done infrared sauna, which helps a little bit. But, um, sharp? It, achy? It's, it's almost more achy. Like, there's... I wouldn't say sharp. It's more achy. Like, there's just a... Right on the on the bone or more in between and the shoulders? I feel like it's like under my scapula. Under like scap I need someone to just like rip it out. <laughs> like that oh, type of feeling. Like. We'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and that's been going on for a couple of years or yeah, how long? Probably like seven or eight years. It okay. was around the time I stopped gymnastics. Was um, there an injury that you kind of felt it happen? I, or? I actually think it's because when I tore my ligament and tendon here, I used... I was just still working out and doing gymnastic stuff, so I did everything one-handed. So I think I strengthened one side too much, and then eventually, when I did both sides again, it never. What happened to your elbow? You've, you've torn. Yeah, I fell it. off the high bar and I tore my ligament and tended. So and over. I, I did what you should never do. I like fell right on my Ooh. hand. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So that was a few months of just using one side of strength, and gotcha. I think that hurt too. And then I went to ther physical therapy and whatnot, but. Okay. I'm assuming that was the main reason. All right. Did, so you went to a chiropractor. They adjusted you. Did they talk about posture? They just sort of just adjusted you and that was it? Or they talk about curves at all? I'm just curious what they would Um, I don't think they talked about posture at no, all. No. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't have the best posture, but I don't think they talked about it. They just popped and said I felt tight. Okay. So. Our alignment, well, there's two reasons we can have tightness. We can have posture, for instance, if our head's forward, which obviously as a student for years and mm -hmm. now our work, you, you know, you do a lot of probably driving and talking and sitting and phones. And so our, our alignment creates tension because the more forward our head goes, the tighter our muscles get. And those muscles attach right where you're pointing to. So mm -hmm. it's kind of an attachment point. It's also a nerve stress point. So the joints in your lower neck will refer pain to that area. So you have some overlap in there and we're going to treat both of them today. Most likely both are upset. You have the lower neck is under stress and the uh, attachments that attach in that area of stress. And then you also have injuries, so that's why I asked about trauma, stuff like that, because when you have a trauma, your body expects it to happen again. It expects you to tear, mm -hmm. you know, so it puts extra bone down. You said on an x-ray, they saw some extra bone growth. Was it maybe your neck? Yeah, yeah, the upper, or somewhere. Some, so yeah. the, the bones will adapt to stress and get larger. It's not a disease. It's the same thing as a callus or a muscle getting bigger. Your body adapts to stress and things grow. You turn right and left? No. No pain return. How about looking up? Um, I used to actually feel like pain like this, but I've been stretching it myself, and I can finally do this again. Um, okay. But it's not the most enjoyable feeling, but it's tight, but I can do it. Okay, so your range of motion yeah. is, we would say the total range of motion looks normal. Yeah. What I typically find is that even though the total value is normal, it's not happening evenly. Mm -hmm. So meaning one area is most likely doing more than yeah. what it's meant to handle, and then another area is doing less. and so. This is where there are tools that chiropractors use called inclinometers that measure your range of motion. The difficulty with that is that it only shows you the total value, not is every part doing its job. Mm -hmm. And the only way really to define that is to actually work on you, and I can feel where yeah. is all the work happening. All right, let's look, let's look straight forward for me. Look at your posture here. Relax your arms by your side, you got it. All right, so your head's a little tilted left. What happens is your left shoulder's high. What's happening is, essentially I'm exaggerating, yeah. but what's going on is that you're in uh, an avoidance of the right side of your neck, and then when your head tilts to the left, you have to, you can't walk around with your head tilted, <laughs> yeah. your shoulders become unlevel. It's not a shoulder problem as much as it is a head injury problem. I do feel like when my legs are longer too, but probably not. Hips are pretty level. We have, yeah. What I see is that the head's forward. This is where, again, the, the, the stress in this area is happening mm -hmm. because your ear hole should be over the center of your shoulder, and we're dealing with about at least an inch yeah. forward head posture. You know, they're nerdy chiropractors, believe it or not, me, that all they care about is getting your ear over your shoulder. We yeah. have to get the uh, forward head posture reduced. That symptom here is an inevitable symptom when our alignment isn't where it belongs. Like if I held a bowling ball in front of me, my muscles would be sore. Yeah. You have to move the bowling ball closer to your body. Otherwise, that mechanical That's stress fair. that the position is creating won't go away. That makes sense. Just adjusting people, just massaging people, just lasering or cryoing. 
it won't get the ear over the shoulder. Mm -hmm. We use all those as tools to make the spine limber so that we can do some stretching, counter stretching, with the goal of getting that to line up. So we're looking at the center of the shoulder and then the ear hole is what the, those are supposed to line up from the side. All right, yep, feet flat, perfect. Take one deep breath in, let's see how your back moves here. Deep breath in, and then head back for me. And now I'll go. There we go, deep breath in, wow. And exhale for me. Deep breath in, yeah, I got you. Head back, exhale. Yeah. Nice. All right, take a deep breath in, and then exhale and twist. I got you. How's that going? Beautiful. Take a deep breath in, exhale and twist. Let's go face that for me, okay? Oh, wow. I know. You're like little. I'm proud of is actually over to the left, but the, everything else is over to the right. So you have a knot here on the left upper and then the right lower. This is what's creating your head tilt is all of this. Mm. See how it's flush on this side and then the right side of your neck has, I call this a den. This is pushed in and then it's popped out on the right side. So there's an injury right here. This is the epicenter of it that's essentially causing your head mm -hmm. to tilt. All right. Top bone's a little bit out to the left there. There you go. There you go. Oh, that's good. There you go. Very nice. Loosen this guy a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Relax this side right there. Let it go. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh. That's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> favorite uh, thing to do? It was either floor or vault. Um, I think floor is more exciting just because oh. I could show off more. <laughs> gotcha. Amazing. I can do a somersault. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fun. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> the cartwheel. <laughs> yeah, the cartwheel, sorry. No, it's not that cartwheel. I mean, come <laughs> I don't think you can do a I can do a cartwheel. Yeah. I don't even know the terms. Oh, jeez. All right. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Something happened in here, and then like it I does said, randomly sometimes like uh -huh. feel so painful there, and I don't remember. I uh -huh. just forget until it happens. So what typically happens is because there's an injury on the right, the weight of the neck will get sent to the other side. Uh -huh. So the left side compensates, and then that puts more stress on the left side of your neck, and then the left lower neck also attaches right into that shoulder blade. That makes sense. So. And I told you to my shoulder why I rub my neck so much. Well, ultimately, the neck is the controller of the shoulders. Okay. And so if we don't get the head to shoulder alignment you know, improved, then kind of just chasing carrots. You yeah. know, you're not going to get to the root cause of, of why that area is under so much stress. And so we, we're supposed to have an arch in our neck. And this is why you always hear of cervical supports or neck supports. What the heck are we supporting? Well, the neck isn't supposed to be straight, which means ortho. Okay. <laughs> it's supposed to be lordotic meaning curve. That's why you have lumbar supports and there's supposed to be a curve in your lower back and a curve in your neck. It's not supposed to be just flat to the floor, right? There's supposed to be an arch in your neck and we develop this arch in the first year of life and it's supposed to take us from 1 to 90 or whatever, how long we're going to live. And We lose that arch at a young age from school years especially. Um, looking down, life, you know, phones, everything is forwardly rotated and our world doesn't check posture right? We're not getting evaluated pediatrically or even chiropractically for posture and most chiropractors are not even doing postural work. So we live in a reactive world where we just wait till injuries happen and then react to it. There's really not much in terms of health care. So it's unfortunate and that's what we try to teach here is not just help, you know, not just address the symptoms but um, teach people how to brush their own teeth in that mm -hmm. sense of, of how do I care for my own spine. There we go. There shouldn't be any Whatever you want to call, you know, kind of kind of grainy mm -hmm. <laughs> or crunchy. Yeah, it's always crunchy up there. There shouldn't be anything. It should just be a smooth slide. <laughs> yeah, no, that'd be nice. No, uh, kind of like running your comb through your hair. It shouldn't catch. It should go through effortlessly. Mm -hmm. You know, it shouldn't be like getting snagged or caught on something. In the same way, when 
Or like running your hand down a piano. All the keys yeah. should just go. You know, I can't even imagine not rubbing my neck and it not crunching. Like, <laughs> right. Well, that's crazy. When I was dating my wife, I asked her how many. She's she's a horse rider. Do you, do you ride horses or have? No, I've never okay. have. Okay. My wife has ridden horses for years, and I asked her. I said, "How many times have you fallen off that horse?" And she said, "I can't count." And I was like, "Well, how many times have you had a, like a really bad fall?" And she's like, "Maybe ten. You know. And I was like, "Okay, these are going to be things that we're going to deal with." Yeah. <laughs> you know. And I and I. Good thing I married you. <laughs> right. And I was going to pose the question to you. You know, how many times have you fallen, like let's, let's say, on your neck and shoulder, right? Like off of a, off of a beam or off of a or doing a flip or. Oh God. Yeah. You I can't count. Yeah, not even. Right. You know. Yeah. You, 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 I've stopped counting it. Yeah. You know, it's happened accidentally. Yeah. Because when I watch, like, Simone Biles or any of these gymnasts do these moves, and they land them perfectly, and you're like, wow, that was amazing. But then what I'm thinking as a chiropractor is, how many times did she not land it to learn how to do it that way? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, how many mistakes had to have uh, occurred? So these are the roots down here. This is, you know, we're going to push all this back down. All these attachments need to be re-compressed. All right, and then we gotta aim your neck back to being here, as, as odd as it might feel. I kind of like it. Okay, good, good. <laughs> All right, this is this is where we're gonna hold you. So at the end of the visit, we'll show you a, a orthotic called a dinner roll, but it's basically a piece of foam that emulates my thumb, and it holds you in this position. And the first goal of care is to use this at home and okay. start to um, remind your spine how to be where it belongs. And the more curve we put in your neck. We also should remove a lot of that stress on that shoulder, the tension in there, mm-hmm. versus just trying to treat the tension. If we don't get the curve back in the neck, it's kind of. I got really strong thumbs, and there's a lot of resistance here. Is there? I mean, I'm just I'm holding you where you belong. It's like, what? Well, aren't you happy, Ed? My neck's curving. <laughs> no, because it's requiring a lot of pressure to get your neck to curve. That makes sense? Yeah, that does. There's, th- there doesn't feel like there's much willingness. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be super. I'm like grabbing his arm. Come on, too. we're like, going across the street. You know. It's okay. If if it was easy, I'd be confused. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I I've been adjusted my whole life. You know the. It's like, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> you feel the ease. Yeah. At which my neck bends. Right. Your neck has like a. Yeah. A, t- a tightness For in there. For sure does. There's not a. There's not a suppleness. Now, like I said earlier. It can be a little confusing because it's like, well, my range of motion is fine. I can bring my head back. Yeah. Ed, she she can bend her neck, but it's not occurring very willingly at the top. You're bending too much at the bottom, mm-hmm. and so your total value looks good. But I, you know, it's it's not happening evenly. All right, so this is gua sha, a little comb. I love gua okay. sha. Okay, All right. you've had this kind of similar type. Um, a little bit. Not at, not on me, but I've I mean on my face like the, the that type of gua sha. Okay. So not the. The blood flow. Well, we watched your videos. Okay, we, cool. We yeah. educated. Right, there's, a, there's a mark coming. <laughs> yeah, up that's right, fine. Right there. And... Yeah, like that right there. These are little injuries that healed. It's just so weird. It's mm-hmm. so normal to me. I just expect uh-huh. it to pop and crack. And... It doesn't have to. It doesn't. It can be yeah. untangled. It's it's ultimately the lymphatics, which are the sewer pipes, get mm-hmm. clogged up. This is where sinus, even ear issues, can happen. Yeah. Like, it all like drains. Here, I feel like a sharp spot in my mm-hmm. not sharp, but it all drains down the neck, and so our world doesn't connect the dots that you know face, you know sinus issues and the neck are really correlated and mm-hmm. connected. All right. Yeah, there's that injury right here on this right side. There's a. How often would you say to do this type of The goal is to get through, I call it boot camp, so it's at least a handful of visits to get through the point where no more marks come out. And at that point, usually everything's moving, and then the care transitions to homework, the stretching that I'm talking about with the dental The stretching isn't very effective if your neck is jammed up, right? If, if the neck is rigid, then it won't bend properly over the device. So we go through a handful of treatments, and the, the short answer is I don't, I don't know, but usually at 25, it isn't too long. Mm-hmm. These are the roots of the neck. It's like the, I think of the neck as like a trunk of a tree. Mm-hmm. And as the tree leans over, the roots on the opposite side start to lift out of the ground. Right? So if you don't stand the tree upright, then the roots won't just, <laughs> it'll keep on happening. And so we have to try to get the head angled back. But yeah, these are the roots right here. Gua sha draws out what is internally blocked up, trapped, 
and it almost directly correlates with soreness, like right there. Yeah. You know, you'll feel the areas that we're drawing out, that's where the marks will come out. And the left one was worse, right? Is that correct? The left one was, is where the main symptoms are? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's... There's not as much coming out over here. Yeah. Some, but... Just scanning that left side's all elevated. So it kind of reflects. So the right, mm -hmm. this is popped up here, and then it pops up on the opposite side because of the shoulder tilt. And so now this is more elevated here on your left side. And this will then usually cause right lower back, right leg. You know, eventual symptoms, probably too young, but my point is that the our world doesn't really do proactive care. It waits till the symptom happens. And the symptom of the right side of your lower back being overstressed is a result of the left middle being tighter, mm -hmm. ultimately from the neck. But right. Some collision happened right there. the difference right here. Yeah. Feel that, yeah. Especially the left Yeah, it's a tough one. I don't know. It's, sometimes I, I think of it like the trampoline effect. The, the brassiere of the bra mm -hmm. holds this area and then it, the area right above will pop out. You know, does that make sense? Because like, like when you, I used to double bounce my sister on the trampoline, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you push down before the trampoline. <laughs> you shoot the other person up. So the, it pushes in here and then it pops out above and then, or then when you have injuries, you know, the area right above is already kind of elevated. Your diaphragm attaches, and commonly when we get injured, we hold our breath, so this yeah. area gets bound up. We gotta learn to breathe through that. And but if it is too hard, don't don't feel bad telling me back off. No, you're good. It's like it's like the pain where I feel like I'm not. Mm. It's not bad pain. For it. That's the, the peak of the whatever injury happened mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. Like itch, like because it's so sharp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pain tickle.
I can feel something right in there. Yeah, yeah. It's sharp, sharp. All right, all right. You've done stuff to your body. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Is that like where you were pushing on it? Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. It does feel different. Right there. We don't typically, without somebody pushing on it, we don't notice the parts of our back that are frozen yeah. until somebody pushes on them. Because the sensors, the nerves are all based on motion. So if an area is totally frozen, yeah. I didn't know it existed. <laughs> until you went in there and asked it to work and then you go, huh. Right? That's why we put casts on things, not just for protection and, you know, so we don't re-injure it, but also for the for it to feel better, right? We immobilize something. And so, in the same way, this area has been injured and then immobilized, and you don't, you don't have a, as much awareness of it until it's adjusted. And then nobody really cares until the lower back gets worn out mm -hmm. because this is frozen for 20 years. The lower back will age at a faster rate, and then they just operate here, right? There's almost very, very, very rare any surgery happens in this area. It's the most commonly locked down frozen area and then in response to this area being frozen, the lower back. Interesting. So to, how do we how do we stop you know sciatica? How do we stop radiculitis and, and radiating symptoms and the disc injury in the lower back? Well, by not allowing your middle back to be frozen for years and then also talking about that lumbar curve that we mentioned earlier. You know, do you have a lumbar curve? Well how do how do I how do I evaluate it? Well I'm gonna put you on a lumbar curve device. If it's easy, then you have a curve. <laughs> If you lay on it and you want to punch me, <laughs> you don't have a curve. So the, the ease of which your body will, you know, be in the right position tells us if we're in the right alignment or not. Gua Sha just speeds up this process. Mm -hmm. It um, expedites the time it takes to make people supple, thereby making the stretching more effective. And then your need for me goes down and live a nice life and brush your teeth and <laughs> you know, care for yourself and not... You shouldn't have to be constantly, three times a week, the rest of your life adjusted. The goal is to be taught how to, how to care for our own spine, you know, acknowledge the things that are understanding what makes our pains, looking down for hours, doing taxes, paperwork, <laughs> phones, right, and trying to, you know, the first way to solve a problem is to identify it, right? Mm -hmm. Many times we're not even identifying what is causing these pains. And, I came in with shoulder symptoms and I left with middle back symptoms. <laughs> I, 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 thumbs up. You know, I, I, the areas of your spine that are hurting usually aren't hurting because they're doing anything wrong. They're just doing too much. Mm -hmm. So thereby, me asking them to do more isn't going to help this problem. <laughs> right? They're already over-functioning. Those attachments are already overstressed. Your lower neck's already overstressed. So the the fix is indirect. We work on the areas that are surrounding those areas, get them working, which they're not going to you know, be happy about. Uh -huh. <laughs> they're going to be reluctant to functioning. And then by restoring their function, they take the stress off the areas that you came in, you know, that were complaining when you first came in. Those are the, we, we hurt typically in the overstressed, hypermobile areas. And everybody goes, oh, you're tight. Well, yeah, the body's trying to protect now the injured areas. <laughs> you know, the only way to help them is by balancing the weight fixing the posture. And it's getting it's much softer now. Much, it is. It much, feels it feels a lot better. Much softer, but yeah, right here is much better. I got you.
Take a deep breath in, relax your shoulders. I got you, we're just gonna arch up, we're stretching. Breathe, all right, breathe for me. Breathe in, exhale, we're gonna stretch. Here we go, coming back. Good, I know, I know. Breathe, got a little deeper to go. Exhale, come on, here we go. All right, good, okay, you did good, okay. Okay, put your arms down for me. Hands right there, okay. All right, breathe, exhale. All right, gotcha, I know, I know. Here we go, get it good. Why right. is it toes and everything? Sorry, yeah, that's a habit. That's <laughs> that area is definitely, you're very flexible here. It's, it, that's yeah, what, that's, every time I had mm -hmm. like therapy, they're like, you're too flexible for us to help Correct. you. Correct. And that's, what happens is you're very flexible in a small area, yeah. but less flexible or very immobilized in another. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to, that's why we say the word adjustment, not the word manipulation. We're trying to balance your mobility move some of the hypermobility away from your lower back and that the areas that move too much will age, will age at a faster rate the candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long yeah. it's not a diseased candle it's just you know we're not taught how to and you know we just if we just wing it and live our life then we're just going to age too disproportionately in the lower back and Did you have kind of care when you were doing gymnastics or is it kind of just walk it off kid? Did you have any? Um, well, I got, my parents just paid for a lot of massages. Massages, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really all, Extended, like, I yeah, I did physical therapy after injuries and then I did it once I had that sharp pain in my shoulder, or not sharp, but gotcha. the whatever pain in my shoulder. Gotcha. Um, but I didn't have anything crazy during. Gotcha. I just got a massage like once every two months, which I thought was a lot for a kid. So. Oh wow! Yeah, that's pretty. You know, there's the side and then your back. Oh. You know, there's that on this left mm -hmm. side. That's where I'm going to show you in a second how to stretch. But then, these are the pains of the roots, the shoulders. These are all Flawless attachments pain. from your neck. And eventually, no marks come out. The goal is that yeah. all the mark is evidence of of what why we're here. And then, as the thing as the tissue moves properly, it won't make that mark. Mm -hmm. It should just become kind of red or you know a pinkish color. For sure. Easy, easy, easy. Uh, a little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was definitely, even the way it sounded there was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Figured I should. Some extra, so some yeah. extra, <laughs> extra. What happens is when you break your ankle, the bones grow back larger, yeah. expecting another break. It's the worst. I, mm. I see them bigger. <laughs> so it's like, There's just, well, it's like muscles. Yeah, they grow both of them. as you yeah. stress a muscle, it gets bigger. Yeah, you stress a joint. You get his big toe, but he's so excited because I try to pop his toes every morning and I never can get a big toe. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. You, get, you mean you get your boyfriend's yes. big toe? Oh, okay. Yes, his. Oh, oh no, that's oh, good though. Now yeah. I'm going to get his big toe. You <laughs> 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 can get them all. <laughs> all right, maybe just uh, sit for me facing this way. Yeah. Have you pressed back with your elbow into my elbow? Oh, yeah. nice. That's so easy. Not easy, but you know. <laughs> Press back on your elbow. Press back with your elbow into my elbow. There we go. Okay, it's okay. I got you. Go ahead and tilt your head left for me. Tilt left, tilt your head left. Oh! That was weird. And tilt, tilt your head left for me, tilt. Okay. It's okay. I wanted this one. All right. All right, go ahead and tilt your head to the right for me. Uh -huh. Oh! Yeah. Wow. Yeah, crunch. Yep. All right, go ahead and tilt your head to the right for me. Tilt right. Oh, wow, that was cool. I don't know how I, I like. I don't know what it did, but I liked it. <laughs> so when we were watching your videos, um, yeah, she, I was, she went to go. I just scratched my head. She wrapped around. Like I thought she just really scratched my head. I didn't pull his she ear. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I, I, I it out. Like, no, I didn't. It was just yeah. a gentle little so like, <laughs> like seven pounds of force or something like that? Rip it off, or yeah. is that just no. a rumor? Yeah, you're done. You're like fourteen pounds. You're like watching the video, like yeah. She reached around. I thought she was scratching. No, my I just, head I just rubbed. <laughs> yeah. So this is the orthotic I was mentioning oh, cool. earlier. And leg straight if you can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. The idea is you kind of keep it in the middle upper neck, and then. Sometimes you'll take your hand and you place it on your forehead 
to get your head to like kind of sink into it? Yeah, I feel like my head, um, like I feel like I'm a tense person, so naturally I feel like it's trying to lift up. Right. And as your neck complies and gets used to being curved, it, we're taking it to a new place. Mm -hmm. We're taking, and actually not so much a new place as a place that your neck used to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your neck used to be curved. You, you okay? You okay? Yeah. So the it goal, feels the, a little tired. It's gonna feel a little. Yeah. Weird. It's um. It might when even when I get you off, it might feel a little warmer, tingly. That's okay. Um, the goal is 20 minutes. 20 minutes is not a number I thought sounded cool. <laughs> 20 minutes is a real number for molding the curve back in your yeah. spine. The ligaments take about 20 minutes to change position. That doesn't mean we have to do it the first time, but the goal is we have to get to 20 minutes and then we have to do 20, 20 minute stretches to get to the first checkpoint. That's kind of the first. I did it five times for five minutes, Ed. Didn't work. Okay, I said 20. Yeah. <laughs> 20 minute sessions would be the first kind of where we need to get that under our belt. If you did it two times a day, it'd be 10 days, you know, but you want to, you know, ideally before you go to bed, end of the day, similar to brushing your teeth, you brush your teeth and go to bed. You don't brush your teeth, eat ice cream and go to bed. <laughs> kind of negate yeah. the benefit of brushing your teeth. In the same way, we don't want to do the dental roll and then look at our phone for a half hour and then go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> right? It, it, I, okay, I just feel like it's more flowy. <laughs> like I I don't feel intense. Yeah. Because I, I just am tense. <laughs> but <laughs> as a person, but no, it feels, feels light. Cool. I feel like I need water. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but it does feel really, really, really good. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much.